How much of a challenge did you guys take it upon the wide receiver room once once Crab went down? Mm. I would say we just looked at it as um, we just all had to step up, uh, do our job even better, even more. Um, you know, you hate to see things like that happen, uh, but and then I was called upon a lot to step up and bring the guys with me. So uh, I feel like just going into the week, uh, game prepping and just preparing for everything, everybody just had a sense of, you know, we got to be better. We got to go out there and make up for this. So that's what I feel about that. Whose idea was it to get them on FaceTime and what was that like? Um, honestly, I don't know. I was like taking off my uh, shoulder pads at the time and then um, we were, Coach Fleck came in, we were doing, you know, lifting him up, the crowd surfing, all of that. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. How my mind was, like, on the game and, you know, we just got the win. Now let me get up out of this stuff so I can, like, have fun. And, honestly, like, no offense to Crab, but I forgot all about him. <laughs> but fun to celebrate with him? Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Once, yeah, and then I was like, oh, shoot, he's on the phone. I was like, yo, Crab. What's up, man? <laughs> but yeah, he was happy for us. Um, he was, I wouldn't say I forgot about him, but he was texting me throughout the game. I remember going back in at uh, halftime, checking my uh, message from him, and he was just like, you know, let's, you know, let's go. Like, you're doing your thing. Can't nobody stop you. All types of stuff. So it was real cool. He's still leading, even though he can't physically be there at the moment. I know you've talked about wanting to be a more complete receiver, not just the, the deep ball guy. What was it to you to? Get some of those contested catches, those possession type. Yeah, so so for me, I felt like I could always do it. Um, all I needed was a chance, a shot, mm -hmm. um, and that was up to me to build that trust. Uh, you know, maybe a year ago or two years ago, Tanner might not throw that ball, or mm -hmm. Coach Sharaka or you know the other one wouldn't have called that play for me, um, knowing you know the coverage was one high or man coverage, and I might not get open. Can I still come down with the ball? So I think I did a good job of building that trust um, for Tanner and Sharaka to just be able, to, be able to just be like, you know, it's our guy versus theirs, and I got more faith and more trust in ours, so let's do it. So, um, yeah, just becoming a complete receiver and making contested catches, I felt like I could always do it. It just took time for me to prove it. Coach talked about catch radius. Mm -hmm. um, and going to get a football, how much do you work on those kind of things? To, like, I think there were a couple of plays that maybe the throw was a little high, but you were able to go to go get it. Yeah, so um, that just goes into being a complete receiver. When things aren't always going to be in your favor, the ball won't always be on your numbers in your chest, or you know, just such an easy grab. Um, you got to be able to extend and go make a play. Um, if a DB is right behind you, you got to be able to keep it away from them. Um, a lot of the times we go throughout practice and every ball is not perfect, even if it's routes on air. So we're constantly getting tested on that. Um, we have certain drills that we focus on that focuses on uh, doing extraordinary catches, basically. So uh, we definitely work on it. Um, to be good at something, you can't just do it once. So Tanner spread the ball around. Uh, ten different players. Um, had you seen him that sharp before? Uh, yeah, I've seen him that sharp every day. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool when you, it gets into um, a game setting, and it just shows how, you know, like, dynamic we are as a group, as a full offensive unit. Um, every, anybody on the field can make a play. And I think this past game, like, really showed that. What is the offense like? Like this, that's so good at running the ball and always probably will be. But is there a challenge for for the wide receivers in this program to have a, sort of a selflessness to to know that um, maybe your opportunities won't be always there, and also you know how important blocking is, and things like that too. Yeah, definitely. Um, one of our like key um, what do you call it? like points in our receiver room is just being selfless. We know what type of team this is. Everybody in the country knows what type of team this is. If we can run the ball, we're going to run the ball. Uh, so just, and for me personally, I was a guy, I was in high school, I didn't score like a whole bunch of touchdowns. I was a very explosive player, but I didn't score a lot. So me not 
you know, always touching the ball or scoring or getting all the love and all that. I've never felt a type of way about that. I wouldn't say I don't want that, but, you know, it just never affected me. I've always been happy for the next guy. And one thing about Chris and his leadership in the room, um, and also, like, the story I just shared with you, like, myself, it's already instilled in me. We just try to push it down into the rest of the group. Um, and I feel like we do a good job in that, just uh, being selfless. We talked about watching the film after the last game, and Simon was like, this was probably the most unselfish game that we've or Did I say that right? Well, selfless game that, you know, we've played these uh, two past games, really. So... Yeah. Is there ever a time when that selfish and selfless are the same thing, meaning you come back to the huddle and you go, I got my guy, you got to get me the ball because I got him? No, I wouldn't call it selfish. I would just say, you know, when I'm going out there and I'll, I'll, be, I'll be going to the sideline like, yo, Simon, he can't guard me. It's not like, <laughs> <laughs> it's not like um, you know, throw me the ball like I need it, I need it. Throw me the ball, it's just like a heads up. Like, look, I got mine, like, we over here, I'm working him, he can't guard me. And it's like, all right, Mike, I got you. You got to get right. this guy here every week. <laughs> <laughs> and then I go talk to Tanner, and I tell him the same thing. I'm like, yo, T, come on. Uh, but, you know, it's like I said, I never feel bad for not getting it or anything like that. And if somebody else makes a play, I'm probably more happy for them than I would be for myself. So it's real cool. After seeing them ruin out in 19, what do you think it'll be like seeing the stripe out on Saturday? Man, I think that's going to be dope. Uh, you know, I, I like seeing, like, the different – atmospheres that we get to go into. Um, I wouldn't say I feed off the crowd, but it, it plays a big part in, you know, your emotions and how you're feeling that day. Like if it's a, a dead kind of day, you got to pull it out of yourself a lot. Um, if it's more alive, it's kind of like, man, you got to get going. Let's go. So um, I think it's going to be real cool. That's more for, you know, the fans and all that. We got to focus on our on our game and the game plan and, just going out there and winning the game. Are there any, sorry, are there any uh, of Moe's 41 touchdowns that, that stand out to you? Uh, the one last week, or not Michigan State, but um, Colorado, because I, I had a little hand in that. <laughs> <laughs> like, pers like, you know, hands-on hand in it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so that was that was real dope. I probably always remember that. And then you know, Fleck he says that's probably like his favorite player like ever. So that just made it you know stamp in my head even more. So um, yeah, if any of them would stand out, it would probably be that one. Is it also just his his style? It's maybe not just one definitive touchdown. It's just how he brings it every single carry. Yeah, he's just a, he's just a, a dog, or really like. You know, I'm I'm a fan of lions. I I would call him a lion. Like he just never stops. It's just he's ferocious. It's just out there, and you you just can't bring him down just by yourself. Like it takes a a ton of you guys. Like and they be way bigger and don't know how to take him down. It's just like I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. When he will, I like watching it. I got I get caught watching it sometimes while I'm blocking. I'm like, oh shoot, I got to get back on my block. <laughs> but you know. Uh, you know, Moe, he's special. Like, that guy, I don't, I don't know how he does it. He's just so low to the ground, explosive. And, you know, it, his speed, he, it kicks in here and there. You know, it, it sneaks up on you. You wouldn't think he was as fast as he is. But I done caught myself a couple times, like, getting out of a block. He gets past me, and I'm, like, running by him. I'm like, whoa, hold on. <laughs> Got to pick up my speed a little bit. But, yeah, Mo, Mo, he's phenomenal. When when Mo was when Mo was moving those piles like that and got a bunch of blockers, out, is it almost like a race for your receivers to get there and out? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, that's a part of our identity in the group, and that just goes into being selfless. Um, you know, whenever there's uh, anybody who's in a in a pile and you know they're not down yet and the whistle has not been blown, everybody get to the pile and push. One more for Michael. Thanks, got it. All right. Thanks, All right, thank you. Thank you.